we will take questions. If you want to ask a question, please raise your virtual hand in the chat. I'll then turn on your camera and mic once I call on you. You can also type a question in the chat if you prefer that. Please be aware that we are recording this media briefing, so we will make that recording available to you shortly after the event ends. Again, thank you for attending. And now let's hear the latest jobs data from Commissioner Demerson and Gabriel Guzman with the Labor Market Information Department. Commissioner. Good. Thank you, Angela, so much uh, for, for the introduction and the opportunity. You know, business is booming here in the great state of Texas and our, our state of our economy is simply that great as we continue to concentrate on the workforce of the future. But, you know, for 26 consecutive months, we've had job growth here in our state, the largest civilian workforce in the history of the state at 14.9, close to 15 million civilian uh, workers uh, available. The largest workforce available as well in the history of the state. Over 33,000 jobs added in the month of April and over 534, half a million jobs added over the year. You know, you couple that with a unemployment rate of 4% and things are looking good in this great state of Texas. And so uh, I wanna turn this over to uh, Gabriel Guzman, who's going to, handle the labor market information and to talk about the details behind some of the numbers that I just uh, just mentioned. Thank you, Commissioner. Today I'm going to uh, go over the uh, monthly labor market data that we just released at 9 a.m. Uh, this is the job count and the uh, unemployment figures, basically the people in the labor force. OK, so starting off uh, with the uh, April labor market report, uh, we have the uh, seasonally adjusted uh, unemployment rate. Uh, for Texas, it stayed uh, remained the same uh, for the third consecutive month at 4%, uh, while the U.S. rate uh, decreased a, a tenth of a point uh, to 3.4%. Uh, that being said, however, uh, the Texas unemployment rate has been at or below uh, 4% for 14 consecutive months. So starting at March 2022, we've been at 4% or lower. Uh, if you may recall from your economics classes, the classical uh, definition of, of the natural rate of unemployment or full employment is basically uh, 4% uh, or less and uh, represents people uh, in between jobs looking for other jobs or upskilling uh, to get a better job. Uh, with this particular point uh, in April, Texas also reached uh, another uh, milestone of the largest uh, labor force in civilian history. I'm sorry, in, in uh, series history at just under 15 million. Uh, we were up 62,200 uh, persons. Um, representing a fourth consecutive uh, monthly increase uh, and a fourth consecutive high uh, and basically the 32nd increase uh, monthly increase over the last 36 months. I also want to state that uh, the state's data also came in. Uh, Texas added the most um, in terms of labor force uh, over the year since March 2022 at 318,000. So we added the most uh, labor force out of all 50 states in, in DC and actually ranked the first in terms of performance of the top 10 states. <clears throat> Looking at the labor force uh, participation rate uh, for for review that that is anyone um, 16 and over uh, who is working or actively looking to work. So in other words, participating uh, in, in the labor market, um, the Texas unemployment, uh, sorry, the Texas labor force participation rate uh, continues to be above the US rate. Uh, we're at 1.5 percent. Um, the Texas uh, unemployment, uh, sorry, labor force participation rate uh, improved for the fourth consecutive month. As you can tell with that blue line there, the upward trend, uh, so has been increasing, improving there, uh, and moved up uh, 0.2 percentage points uh, while the U.S. participation rate uh, remained unchanged at 62.6%. Uh, um, so overall in history, uh, labor Texas has, been, has had a higher rate uh, than the U.S. since May 2009, uh, representing 168 uh, months in a row. Uh, not shown on, on here is the uh, employee to population ratio. Uh, this is basically those that are employed as a percentage of the population, the same population as the labor force. Uh, Texas is at 61.5 uh, versus the U.S. at 60.4. Um, so Texas moved up by 0.2% over the month. So another uh, data point that shows Texas outperformed the nation as a whole. <clears throat> so looking uh, at the civilian labor force substate areas, we see that uh, none of the areas actually decreased in labor force over the year. Uh, but for context, I would just like to say that the Texas uh, not seasonally adjusted uh, labor force here actually grew 2.9% over the year uh, and outperformed the U.S. increase at 1.7%. So not quite twice as much, but it did outperform uh, the U.S. Uh, overall, Texas added about 427,000 uh, people uh, since March 2022. Uh, but since April 2019, so right before COVID, the effects of any effects of COVID were felt uh, since this is not seasonally adjusted. Um, 
we added about 1.2 million uh, persons over this time, so almost 9% increase. Uh, switching gears to the substate on the left there, we had the five fastest uh, MSAs um, in the nation, or I'm sorry, in the state. Um, no change at the top, Midland and Odessa experiencing uh, strong uh, mining, mining, oil, uh, mining and logging uh, employment growth. Uh, and also, since that's such an important industry in the area, it also supports um, a lot of the other industries in that area. So overall, increasing job growth and increasing uh, labor force gains. Uh, Midland leads at 6.3% and Odessa at 4.5. Uh, what has continued to be astounding is the next three, uh, Dallas, Austin, and San Antonio uh, are also in that top part. The uh, Dallas at 3.9%, uh, all the way down to San Antonio at 3.5% uh, increase over the year. Uh, the standing part of that is th these are large metro areas, as you know. Uh, the smallest of which San Antonio's labor force represents 1.3 million. So each of these have, or at least each of these have at least 1.3 million. So a gain of 3.9% of Dallas Fort Worth translates to 163,000 people over the year. So quite a large gain there. Um, switching gears uh, to, to job growth. Um, as I said earlier, we uh, and the commissioner said earlier, we added 33,300 uh, jobs over the month. This represented the 35th increase uh, over the last 36 years. Um, and with that increase, of course, we added another series high uh, ter in terms of total jobs, uh, a 19th consecutive series high uh, to reach uh, 13.871 million uh, in employment. Uh, over the year, we added 534,600 um, uh, jobs for an annual growth rate of 4%, a pretty large annual growth rate of 4%. If you compare the time immediately before the pandemic, so February 2020, that annual growth rate, which we were still growing, uh, as you can see in the chart there, that long, long line right before that large dip, that annual growth rate was 2%. So right now, as of April 23, we're at 4%, so we're twice, this, twice the rate as we were before the pandemic. Uh, just also, I just want to add that total private sector is actually quicker, uh, or sorry, grew uh, outperformed even the total non-farm, uh, grew at 4.2%, uh, while April also marked the 23rd consecutive month that uh, every major uh, private industry achieved annual uh, positive annual growth. Switching gears um, to the um, major industries uh, over the month, uh, we see that most of the industries added jobs. Uh, overall, 10 of 11 major industries added jobs uh, and were led by professional business services with a gain of 8,700 jobs, uh, mostly driven by uh, administrative and support and waste management management and remediation services. It's quite a mouthful there. I'm sorry about that. Uh, this basically is facility report, uh, support services, janitorial services, office administrative services, things like that to support um, office uh, sector. Um, up 8,800 jobs, so a majority of that gains was for that particular subsector. Trade transportation utilities next with 6,400, mainly driven by gains in retail trade of 5,400. Leisure and hospitality up 6,400, mostly driven by hotels and restaurants with a gain of 9,600. Uh, the only sector uh, that actually lost jobs over the, the month, uh, construction there, the one on the left, you can see lost about 8,500. Uh, overall, um, you know, it was still uh, outpacing the U.S. on an annual rate, 3.6% uh, uh, compared to 2.7%, and construction only being one month removed from a series high level of 806,000, uh, which would have been in March 2023. 20, uh, so we're only one month removed from a series high, and there was the first decrease in the last five months. So it's, you know, we, we can't look too much into this, say this is a, a growing trend. It's just, you know, it's um, overall just a, a, a first, you know, first drop uh, in, in, the, in a while, so. <clears throat> Looking at COVID recovery, of course, since we're adding jobs, we continue to move up that line. Uh, Texas is now 106.9%, uh, whereas the U.S. is at 102.2%. They both moved up by 0.2 uh, percentage points over the year, uh, but Texas has added just under 900,000 jobs uh, since February 2020. Uh, overall, uh, Texas um, has 10 major industries that have surpassed COVID. On the right to that, you see the major industries of Texas versus U.S. The ones in the green are the ones that have met the pre-COVID level. Um, so Texas has met 10 uh, of 11 major industries. The only one that has not met that uh, threshold yet being mining and logging. Uh, but that industry did move up by 800 jobs uh, over the month. Uh, Texas has outpaced the U.S. in most of all these industries with the exception of construction uh, and mining and logging. <clears throat> Looking at the uh, Texas metro areas, um, every, and this is annual growth, every major metro or every metro area in the Texas in the state uh, was positive over the year. Uh, with the, uh, so anything above that x-axis would be a positive. Um, so the ones in yellow are the uh, areas that 
have not met the pre-COVID level. Uh, those were uh, Beaumont, Port Arthur, uh, or Odessa, and Texarkana. Uh, overall, these areas only represented about 2.4% of the overall uh, urban um, metro population, or about 300,000 out of uh, uh, 12 million, 12.76 million. Um, Odessa and, and Texarkana are only a thousand jobs off from meeting that threshold, uh, with Beaumont the furthest behind at 3,200 jobs or 98.1% of that threshold. <clears throat> Looking at uh, average hourly earnings, this comes to us from the current employment statistics, the same um, program that gives us the job count. Uh, overall, the total private uh, hourly earnings uh, Average hourly earnings moved up $1.49 uh, over the year to about 5%, 5% increase. Uh, overall, five industries uh, outperformed that, uh, including the highest ranking uh, over the year performance growth in April uh, for financial act activities, uh, up 10.85%. Uh, this equated to a gain of $4.30 uh, and achieved actually the highest AHE uh, hourly earnings level in that series uh, at $43.94, so just under $44 an hour. Uh, construction up at 10.2 percent, up to 32 dollars and three cents. Um, manufacturing actually uh, had the fastest growth rate in that series uh, since it began in 2006. Expanded 9.3 uh, percent um, as jobs in that particular sector are, are, are continually growing. Uh, it added 40,000 jobs since uh, COVID. Uh, Legion Hospitality up almost 6 percent and private education and health services up 5.4 percent uh, over the year. Uh, there's a slowdown uh, in professional business services, uh, 0.58, just about 6 percent, and uh, dropped from a high of 11.6 percent uh, from uh, January 2022, but overall uh, positive job growth over the year. <clears throat> so uh, Texas continued claims, initial claims uh, continue uh, to be low. Um, the four week moving average for continued claims uh, only moved up a, a hair, 653 claims to be exact. Uh, so a small increase there. Uh, I'm sorry, initial claims, 653. Uh, continued claims moved up uh, 3,166 uh, 166, uh, claims over the month, or about 2.6%. Uh, overall, still really low. Uh, if we look at the um, it's not on the graph there, but if we look at the April 2019 numbers, uh, continued claims was 110,000. Uh, so in April 2023, we're at just under 124,000. So not much there before the pandemic, uh, a little bit higher. Uh, April uh, for initial claims was 12,682. And in, in April 23, it's about 15,257. So not much of an increase uh, considering the, the universe that covered employment that were covered by Texas UI laws is just under 13 million. Uh, so 124,000, not much of, of, of a percentage there. <clears throat> and since we have uh, Commissioner Demerson, our uh, our commissioner representing employers, we thought it'd be great to um, have this chart here. This is from our um, quarterly census of employment and wages program. Uh, we just released this today uh, in addition to the CES and Laos, the job uh, data and the um, unemployment data. Uh, this particular data set it represents most of where we get our um, our sample from our universe of employment. Um, with this thing, it, it's with this data, it's usually about like five months behind because it's 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 this it's the set the universe of employment um, over uh, 600,000 uh, employers in Texas, and 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 so it takes longer to process. Uh, but from this data set, you can get uh, information like county level uh, data, average weekly uh, wage data, and the amount of uh, actual employers uh, increasing in the state. So what this chart is saying that is pre-COVID to now. Uh, which would be fourth quarter 2022, the most recent which we released today, uh, that employers actually grew uh, since COVID. Uh, so over the last four years, uh, overall, um, empl uh, employers increased 13.7%, uh, uh, while representing a 6.1% increase in employment and average weekly wages uh, increased 15.6%. Looking at the actual industries, uh, the one that stands out the most is information employers, uh, grew 46.3% uh, uh, with employment up uh, 11.8 percent representing uh, 25,600 jobs. Uh, information um, meaning everything from uh, publications uh, and print uh, media uh, as well as web hosting data centers things like that. Um, a lot of these jobs uh, being represented uh, however in, in the big four Austin, Dallas, uh, Houston and San Antonio uh, with a large increase uh, in information sector jobs. Uh, Austin actually moved up 64.5 percent or uh, added about 828 firms. Um, the other areas Dallas Houston, San Antonio, uh, about half of that, about 30%. So a lot of growth there. Um, 
most likely because of COVID as we move uh, to more virtual uh, workspace, uh, more shopping online, things like that. Uh, these data uh, centers uh, host a lot of the uh, the information that that you know, that gets circulated that allows for a virtual uh, environment. Uh, professional business services also moved up 24.3%, uh, well represented um, in the software design and, and uh, computer programming uh, industries, up 16.3% uh, in employment, about 300,000 jobs. And natural resources and mining is the only one that decreased, uh, down 3.1% employers. Um, but there's also um, evidence that employers uh, in that area are probably more productive and able to do more with less employment. So gains in technology uh, in that sector, um, are, they're able to offset a, any um, any decrease in employment from pre-COVID levels. <clears throat> Just to sum up uh, what we spoke of earlier, uh, so the Texas season just unemployment rate remains at or below 4% uh, percent for the 14th consecutive month. Uh, we continue to hit new, new highs. Uh, in, in total non-farm growth, uh, representing a, a 19th consecutive month uh, at about 13.871 million um, in the job count. Uh, we added more jobs over the year than any any other state uh, as well uh, being reflected with this. Uh, every major uh, metro area also grew over the year in April. Uh, and finally, uh, initial continued claims uh, continue to be low. This is for, uh, for, uh, for April, um, but regardless of all the um, layoff stories in, in the news uh, we're still seeing uh, low claims overall uh, job job openings job listings are still elevated there's still plenty of opportunity in the state and so we believe that the unemployment rate, uh, continues to be low because of this thank you very much and that's all i have uh, for this afternoon Excellent. Thank you so much to both Commissioner Demerson and Gabriel Guzman for that great presentation. Uh, I want to open it up and see if we have any questions. Um, and while I give you a moment, again, please raise your virtual hand if you have one, then I'll allow your mic and camera. Um, if I don't have any hands raised, I do have a question, especially, of course, pertaining to Commissioner Demerson. And that's going to be, what are you hearing from Texas employers? Is their biggest need that they have right now? So, so Angela, at Texas employers, we're continuing to hear um, about the labor shortage that's out there. And I'm quite sure Gabriel will, will join in in this conversation. But the, the shortage is out there amongst teachers um, uh, in the manufacturing fields, a number of the healthcare areas. Uh, we continue to, to hear about the shortage. But we're doing a lot to address that here in Texas. We have uh, apprenticeship programs, internship programs. Uh, our skilled uh, uh, training programs that are set here, Skills for Small Business, our Skills Development Fund, a number of tools that are out there to help train up that workforce. And we're doing a lot of things to make sure that there's a pipeline of talent going into those employers as well. And so we're not sitting by, sitting back, uh, watching this happen. We're, we're actually doing something to make uh, things happen in that space. 28 local workforce boards here in the great state of Texas, and each one of those workforce boards at their, their level are Putting, on, putting programs together to make sure that if there's an employer that has a need, uh, that we're addressing that need. Excellent. Thank you so much for that answer. And not seeing any more hands, I am going to wrap it up for us. Again, I'm Angela Wellner, the press officer. We're going to close the labor release media briefing. Thanks, everyone, for attending. The next labor release is going to be Friday, June 16th. And we're going to leave with closing words from Commissioner Demerson. Thank you, Angela, and, and thanks to all of those who uh, have attended and participated in our labor conference uh, meeting today. Gabriel, thank you for, for the presentation uh, as well. You know, those are some historical numbers that we've had here, and uh, we're excited about the numbers that have been presented. And one thing that we always say uh, is that it sounds like we're bragging here in Texas, but in Texas, uh, uh, we always say the fact of the matter is it's not, it ain't bragging if it's true. Uh, we're taking care of business the, the Texas way, and we're going to continue to do just that. Thank you again for the opportunity and thank you for all that you do uh, for our great state of, of Texas.